Well, this is lecture two in the flipped classroom series. And we're going to finish up 1.3, and then I'm going to throw in all the concepts of 1.4 and 1.5. So in 1.3, you could rewatch uh, lecture one if you wanted, um, especially that, like, latter half of it in which I covered 1.3. I left off basically after having described displacement. And uh, displacement is the difference between two vectors. In fact, you can make the difference between any two vectors. So if you have a particle that maybe took some path like this, um, that's uh, one, two, three, four and you've got some notion of a coordinate system. Maybe this time we put our coordinate system down here. And so this is vector one, and this is vector two, and this is vector three, and this is vector four. Down here is the origin of our coordinate system. Then we write this as R1, and this as R2, and this as R3, and this as R4. And I can take the difference between any two of these vectors. So uh, if I wanted to, I could take R13. And that would be R3 minus R1. And graphically, R13 looks like this. It's the vector which, when you add it to R1, gets you R3. The difference between R3 and R1 is the thing that you add to R1 to get R3. So this is the vector that you tack on to the tip of R1 to get yourself over to the tip of R3. Hmm. Now, usually people don't do R13. They would do R12 and R23. It would be rather unusual for somebody to do R13. Just did that as an example. Let's get rid of it. Okay, so now we're back to just R1, R2, and R3, oh, and R4. And um, here's what R12 looks like. And here's what R2, 3 looks like. And here's what R3, 4 looks like. Now, Knight likes to use the symbol delta. So he's, this is a very common way to do this. I'll probably do it that way a lot. I'm noticing, uh, reading Knight very carefully myself, that he tends to call this delta R1. He calls this delta R2, and he call, would call this delta R3, meaning it's a change in R, or a difference in R. Now, I, the one thing I don't quite like about that is it's not quite as explicit as what I'm suggesting, R12, R23, R34. That really tells you, well, between what and what. Um, Delta R1, he means the change that occurred just after the vector, the particle was at R1. So he's sort of implicitly saying, yeah, well, the change in R1, yeah, from when it got to, till it got to R2. And the ch and this one, the change in R2, yeah, well, till it got to R3. And this one, the change in R3, yeah, well, till it got to R4. So you will want to do Tactics box 1.1 at the bottom of page 6. You'll want to look at figure 1.7 and understand what the negative of a vector is. That's on the right side of page 7. And then once you know what the negative of a vector is, you'll want to do tactics box 1.2, which tells you how to subtract one vector from another. So look, you've already got vector addition, 
vector multiplication by minus one, vector subtraction, you can probably double a vector, I hope, uh, by taking, just making it twice as long and continue to point the same direction. So you've got vector multiplication. And uh, that pretty well wraps up 1.3. After you've done those tactics boxes, come back and we'll do 1.4. Well, I'm going to start 1.4 right now. Here we go. 1.4 is about velocity, and 1.5 is about acceleration. Let's see if we can introduce velocity and acceleration. So here's another motion diagram. Try not to make them all the same. Boop, boop, boop. Bloop. All right, so this is some particle that went, took some path like this. Ooh. All right, and let's call that point zero, and this point one, and this point two, and this point three. Now let's set up a coordinate system. Okay, and this would be R zero, and this would be R one, and this would be R two, and this would be R3. And this would be what I call R01, or Knight calls delta R0 in his text. And this would be R12, or what Knight calls delta R1. This would be R23, or what Knight calls delta R sub 2. Yeah. And here's the concept of velocity. Remember how all these motion diagrams, each of these is supposed to represent the position of the particle at some equally spaced time, not equally spaced distance, that's some equally spaced time. So if this is a 24 frame per second video, this would be 1 24th of a second later, 2 24th, which is a 12th of a second later, 3 24th of a second later, which would be an eighth of a second, okay? And so that's what happened in that eighth of a second. Important that the frames, at least for the moment here, be equally spaced. So whatever the spacing is between frames, let's call that delta t. Whatever that spacing is, that could be a 24th of a second, it could be a 10th of a second. Here's what velocity is. Here's how you get velocity. V not the first velocity in this problem is by definition delta r sub naught over delta t now this is a vector and this is just some number that we divided it by so this is also a vector the velocity is the displacement divided by the time difference and this pointed some direction, so this points some direction. Okay, V1 is delta R1 over delta T, and V2 is delta R2 over delta T. Mm. Now, just so we have both notations going, uh, I could also have written V naught is equal to R naught one over delta T. V one is equal to R one two over delta T. And V two is equal to R 
2, 3 over delta t. That's just notation, no new concept. And then I could, using the definition of R01, write this as R1 minus R0 over delta t. And I could write this as R2 minus R1 over delta t. And finally, I could write this as R3 minus R2 over delta t. Uh, in our course, most often distances have the units of meters. And so the components of R01 are, you know, like 0.3 meters, 0.6 meters, whatever. There's things in meters. And time in this course, most of the time, time has units of seconds. So we've taken something with units of meters, a vector, each of whose components is a unit of meter, divided by something whose units are time, and gotten something new. And this means the components of this new vector have dimension, distance over time, or in most commonly in this course, meters per second. But it could be miles per hour, or it could be anything like light years per, uh, light years per year. Um, okay, so that's V naught, V1, and V2. And that's 1, 4. Now 1, 5. 1, 5. Okay, this is already a lot, but I just need you to know where we're going. So I'm going to kind of like soften you up a little bit by telling you about 1, 5 and acceleration. You know how we get acceleration? We just take differences in velocities. So this is a velocity, this is a velocity, and this is a velocity, right? We've got three velocities. V0, V1, and V2. So we've got three velocities that we defined in 1.4. We're going to use those to get something we call acceleration. And what is A naught? A naught, the acceleration, is going to be V1 minus V0 over delta T. And A1 is going to be V2 minus V1 over delta T. And A3 is going to be V3 minus V2 over delta T. Okay, this is, oh, ooh, that's A2. This is acceleration at time zero, this is acceleration at time one, this is acceleration at time two, this is how I've defined it. Let's look at the units. This already had units of distance over time, which is usually meters over second, but look at I've divided by time again. So this has unit, this whole thing, right hand side, has distance over time squared as its units. So acceleration has dimension, distance, over time squared. And the way we write that is we write it like this. There's a brackets symbol. We say the units of, of, of original position were uh, length. And the units of velocity are length over time. And the units of acceleration are length over time squared. Okay, so um, you guys do one dot, read all through one dot four and one dot five, and we will jam on problems using those concepts in class. <laughs>